Rob Doster here. I got Jeff Goodman with me. Hell no. John Fink. Are we still live? Kill the 68 till I die. I'm sorry, man. I'm blacked out. Randolph children. DJ Khaled. You know the big DJ Khaled guy? Hands grow up and in. Goodman needs to be fired all the time. Josh Pastor. You're going to beat people straight up. You know the deal. Drink responsibly tonight. I'll be drinking with you. Jarrell McNeil. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid majors. This is Field of 68. After that. All right. Welcome back. Happy Halloween. Uh, trick or treat to everybody, including Doug Gottlieb. Doug, do you still go trick or treating? Yeah, of course I do. It's the only reason I had to. What children. are you going to dress? I was going to dress up as you tonight. That's uh, uh, that that's scary. Although you're in a goblin costume, <laughs> so. All right, welcome in to our annual hot seat show. Uh, I'm Jeff Goodman, uh, joined by Doug Gottlieb, of course, and Jeff Borzello of ESPN. Uh, two guys who have the pulse uh, of the hot seat of college basketball. Uh, this is a show that. Some people love us to do. Some people uh, absolutely hate that we we do this, but uh, it, it must be done. It must be done, and we're going to go through some huge names that are in the hot seat, and then we'll go down the list of some other names that maybe aren't quite as big among the power schools, and we'll also hit you with who are the guys that are going to be in the mix for big-time jobs next year, and not just Dusty May, which is the obvious one. We're going to give you a couple names here of guys that you don't know about that could be in the mix to take over for some of these guys that are going to lose their jobs. All right, let's come out of the gates, guys, with some big boy names. And I'm going to start with the biggest boy name. Uh, Doug, John Calipari, I'm going to give you some numbers, okay? His first 10 years at Kentucky, he went to uh, – he won a national title, uh, three Final Fours, three Elite Eights, Sweet 16. Uh, he – they averaged 30 and a half wins a year over those first uh, 10 years. And they won 31 NCAA tournament games over that span. The last four years, and I know one of those years they didn't uh, play a full season, they didn't have a uh, NCAA tournament. They averaged 20 and a half wins a year. Uh, they have won one NCAA tournament game against Ed Cooley's uh, checked out Providence team um, last year. They've won one tournament game in the last four years. John Calipari is owed $33 million after this year. Will still be owed. Is he on the hot seat, Doug? What has to happen for John Calipari not to be the coach next season at Kentucky? I think they'd have to have uh, an NIT like a collapse or barely sneak into the NCAA tournament. It, it's so much money. and. And the, the challenge is, and I think you're seeing this actually at Alabama and football, is, you know, the landscape has changed so dramatically. Because unlike football, you have overtime elite, you have the NBL, um, you have the G League Ignite, taking away, let's just say, half of the top 10 players in every year's class. And then like football, now all of a sudden, you know, there are new players in the game where... You, when you're recruiting the big boys, you're not just recruiting against uh, uh, Duke and North Carolina and Indiana the way you used to. Now you and now anyone can put all their resources towards one player, and you can frankly get outbid or equally bid. And then a kid goes like, "Well, why would I go to Kentucky when they haven't been winning recently? They don't have the depth of draft picks recently, and oh yeah, by the way." This other school is going to pay me as much or more, and I'm going to get the ball and maybe stay close to home or play with more of a ready-made program. So I think he's fighting a battle on multiple fronts, but I don't think it's to the point where Kentucky is ready to fire him because who do you hire if you fired John Calipari? And if there's one thing we know, following John Calipari is maybe the most difficult job in America. Who, who do you hire? Borzello, who, who, who do you look at if you're Mitch Barnhart and you're at the end of your tenure right now as AD of Kentucky, if you make a move with John Calipari? And I, I agree. I think it would have to be NIT or a high seed in the NCAA tournament and kind of a St. Peter's repeat from two years ago for the fan base. You, to get you still think so still, up in arms. 
it, it doesn't – if they have a St. Peter's type thing, it means they were a two seed, won like 30 games. I don't yeah. see him being fired if they do that. Like I, I really do think it would take an NIT thing, an NIT appearance, and just the dreadful like second half of the season. The other problem is, like you just mentioned, who do you hire? Like If you're Kentucky, you have to take the biggest of swings. And I just don't know if there's an obvious name out there. And if you're already spending $33 million to hire Cal, to fire Cal, you know, you don't really have unlimited funds to just go buy somebody out of their contract, whether it's a big name college guy, an NBA guy, somebody like that. Like, I don't think they're going out and spending $50, $60 million to fire Cal and hire somebody else. Um, and I, I really don't think there are any obvious names. I mean, over the last five, 10 years, you've heard, okay, well, Sean Miller might be the next guy. Chris Beard could be the next guy. Chris Holtman could be the next guy. I don't know if you have an obvious name anymore that would be the, you know, locked on next guy at, at Kentucky. I mean, maybe you have a better name than me, but I, I really don't. One does not pop to my head immediately for him, for them. There's one name. name. Hold on. I got a great I got name. a name. Yeah. I think All right, go ahead, done, Mark. right? Billy Donovan. Maybe. Yes. Okay, Same. I thought of him. I just, I just, I mean, he was going to cost money. Uh, they, had like, a, they had a players-only meeting. After the first game. I know, first game of the season, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to go well for Billy. Yes, it's not going to go yeah. well this year. No, and, and, we know and here's the other part where where there was, you know, you go back five years ago and it was done with the college thing, not doing it. Um, but now it's like, okay, maybe the pro thing is done and kids are grown and, you know, it's Kentucky. It's essentially a pro job anyway. You know, I, yeah, I think that's the one but. He right. didn't go but out. The, the, it's a the, different landscape. The issue now. is got this. More okay? The issue is, the issue is this. Okay, we all operate under this. Kentucky's got money, like. Mm, okay, Jeff pointed out thirty million to get rid of him. Probably another five to seven to get rid of the staff as well. Remember, those guys have multi-year contracts. So you're talking somewhere in the thirty-five to forty mil all in just to get rid of him. Okay, then to hire a new coach. You're not taking the Kentucky job for less than five, probably more than that. Right? More, you're talking more. another ten to. If you're 15. Billy, it's more than that, yeah. Right, right. but that way well, again, then wait. Well, here's the other calculation. Then you got to get the NIL right, which is several million dollars. Let's just say conservatively five million dollars. Okay, so, and then remember, you're asking all of these same donors, "Hey, we need you to pay all this money." And then, oh, yeah, by the way, football is calling the exact same donors. We're like, yo, you want to compete in the SEC? You got to pony up. That's what's really going on in these, these campuses, that we operate on this, this belief that, you know, the big boys have all this money. They have more money than the little guys, but there are not endless amounts of money. People go like, I'm out at some point. You can only call me so much. New facilities you called me for. You know, you had to tighten up the baseball coach you got me for. The women's basketball, the football, and now basketball, and you want more money? The only thing I'd say, Doug, here's the only thing I'd say is you're not going to ever have to pay him $33 million because of the offset. He's going to get another job. You know, but, but we go back to the money. For a year. I, mean, and I mean, I'm with Doug on the there's not unlimited funds. I mean, he's been calling for like a new practice facility slash, you know, sports science place for years now. Which, which is it. dumb, by the way. Which is dumb. Yeah, I'm not saying whether it's smart or dumb. Facilities it's just do I mean, not if, if they had unlimited money, but it, right, it's right, just no, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm saying they have you know, money. It's it, just it, they don't have. I don't. I mean, they probably don't have 50, 60 million. They want to go spend on on a coaching change when it's. I mean, it's it's not Kentucky expectations, but it's not bad. I mean, he's still getting number one, number two recruiting classes. Aside from the the um, you know disaster of a few years okay, ago, so how do we, they're still listen, competitive. All right, it's time to talk about Vaulted, first of all. Vaulted is an app that allows you to participate in daily cash prize pools without an entry fee. Uh, V-L-T-E-D. It's the place to store your own bold, bold predictions forever. And by using the Vaulted Challenge feature, you can prove you're smarter than your friends. So go download the Vaulted app. Give it a try for free. Vaulted is spelled V-L-T-E-D. And it's the app to challenge your friends, store your predictions, Join daily cash prize pools without any entry fee. Download Vaulted today. All right, so I went in there, and I'm going to challenge you guys. And my prediction is that Kentucky does not win 25 games this season. Um, they were a lock to win 25 every year the first 10 years. 
I think they did it may, maybe eight or nine of Cal's first 10 years other than the NIT year. Uh, last few, they, they haven't done it. Obviously, they are really bad in, in 21. Um, then a couple of years ago when they lost to St. Peter's, they won 26. Last year, they won 22 and 12. Uh, where do you guys stand on this? How, Doug, are you, are you accepting my challenge and, and saying that Kentucky's going to win uh, at least 25 games this year? So we're doing over-under? Is that the total? Basically, I'm saying they're not going to win 25. You're in the vaulted app. You're basically saying, I I'm taking the challenge, and I disagree with you. Or you agree with me. Uh, no, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I think it's more likely than not they don't win 25 games. right? Because remember, like you're throwing some freshman guards out there against yeah. Kansas, Miami, Carolina, I, I know they, you know, you, you play a team like Penn, you have no idea, Louisville, uh, we don't know what, what happens there. And when they get in the SEC, and this this is where kind of the, the SEC is an incredible conference because they loaded up with coaches going back a couple years ago, right? And you've seen the product be better in the NCAA tournament and in the regular season because of it. And now with the NIL, all those teams have dudes. And oh yeah, by the way, Here's, I just, I think it's going to be a challenge. They're still everybody's biggest game. They're still a court storming game. And the last part is this, and this is a real thing in college basketball. The, the saying goes, every home game is an unofficial visit for your visitors, right? And every team you have that comes in, whether the Kentucky guys are getting paid as much as people say they're getting paid or not, every one of those kids wants a piece of that NIL, NIL, NIL change. And they are going to bring it like you've never seen. Um, the combination of you still have COVID seniors and older guys, the the plethora of talent because of the NIL in the SEC and the coaching in the SEC, it's more likely than not they don't win 25 games. I still think you have a very good year. I don't think they win more yeah. than 25 games. Borzello, so Dillingham, Wagner, Shepard, young backcourt. Obviously, they, they were fortunate. Uh, then Antonio Reeves was not able legally, I guess, to transfer after taking those classes at Illinois State uh, in, in, in the summer. Um, he didn't just like his professors. He actually wanted to transfer. Uh, where do you stand with this team? Trey Mitchell, huge addition, got fortunate there uh, that Huggy Bear uh, got fired and they were able to pluck him from the portal. Are they good enough to, to win 25 games? I think so. And, and I think part of it is, you're right, they're a young team. The other part that you didn't mention is they literally don't have any big men right now. Uh, right. Two of them are out with foot injuries still uh, for a few more weeks. And then another one, we don't really know his status for the season. But if you look at their non-league, and Doug mentioned a couple of tough games. They do play Kansas. They do play Miami. And they play Carolina. They play Gonzaga way later in the season. But the rest of the, the, the non-league schedule isn't that hard. I mean, it's New Mexico State. It's Texas A&M Commerce. It's Stonehill, St. Joe's. So I'm saying, like, they yeah. can go into league play 10-3. and three. Uh, you know, sure. maybe 11 and two, they, they could beat Miami at home. I still think with, yeah, with the roster they have. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, the, then you go into SEC play and if you go 12 and I guess they, I think they play 18 games now. And let's say you go 12 <laughs> and six, 11 and seven, you probably need two or three postseason wins to get to 25. But I do think that once they're clicking, once they're fully healthy in terms of, you know, next level NBA talent, there's not going to be a lot of teams that have more than that on the floor with them. And, and so I just think that by the time, postseason rolls around where I think they would need three, two or three wins to get to this 25 mark. I just think that they're going to be able to, to match up with these teams from a talent perspective. And then these guys, the freshmen, they're going to have basically a full season under their belts. I like Wagner more than you do. I like Edwards. Mitchell has, has been around for a while. Antonio Reeves is, is a really good scorer. And then if Bradshaw can ever be healthy, he's going to be one of the most talented bigs in the country. And then you fill in, you know, Dillingham is depth and there's just, they have a lot of pieces and I think that they'll be able to figure it out at some point later in the season. And I think they'll get to that 25 number. I, I think it's a All really right. smart piece of analysis when you look at their you look at their schedule. I think here is the one thing is maybe your two things. OK, one is there's always that one game they play in the non-conference where you're like, who yeah. beat Kentucky? <laughs> right. There's it just always that one. You're like Stonehill came in like, really? And yeah, and then the other part is, and I don't know if you guys saw their blue-white game where Dillingham had 40, right? Like, 
you think he wants to be depth or you think that Wagner's okay with some other dude getting 40, right? Like those guys are thirsty. Like they came out of the Sahara desert. And I, I actually think Cal Perry is generally the master of this thing of controlling all of that stuff. But it's a challenge when you have multiple young guys, especially ones that have to have their ball in their hands to play. Like that's, that's a hard way to live, especially when you get to the SEC. And even early on in the season when you still don't know what you have and these other teams that you've never heard of, they're not, they're not great at the end of the season, but they got 23, 24 year old dudes. They play a zone, they play slower. They know the rules of college basketball. They gap you, they load up. And all of a sudden, you feel like a road team when you're playing in Lexington. All right. So they were ready to build a statue for Cal a few years ago. I'm not sure if that statue will go up uh, outside of Rupp. Same can be said a year ago for Hubert Davis down at Chapel Hill uh, from what he did. Obviously, he flipped the switch two years ago. They were mediocre for most of the year. Then came March 5th. He ends K's uh, season, his home Final home game, he spoils that. Then he ends Coach K's career at the, in the Final Four. Uh, and then last season comes. Preseason number one, they are the first preseason number one not to make the NCAA tournament. And now we are at a crossroads for Hubert Davis entering year three. He's one of their own. He's super likable. Doug, you've known him forever. He's like the nicest human being ever. But. He's got to win this year, doesn't he? If they don't make the NCAA tournament and they got Baycott and RJ back with a new revamped group, isn't Hubert Davis done? I think it would be it would be hard to see them continue. Like, there'd be a Bill Guthridge type of feeling to it. I like. I think they're going to make the NCAA tournament. I think they're going to be fine. Me too. Um, Me too. But y- y- but yes, I think that would. And, and by the way, I I. I think I know the name of the guy. This is the opposite of Cal. Like, I know the name of the guy who would probably replace him. Um, but I think that one. I don't. Go ahead. I, I'm not sure of who it is. Wes Miller. Wes Miller. Well, that, probably yes. A year, as long probably as a year or two years. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a year West. or two years away at Cincinnati from flipping it, you know. But I think Wes Miller would be because, I mean, Wes. Um, Roy Williams is still in very much – Bubba Cunningham is a very good AD, but Roy is still very much in control of that thing. So, I mean, look, I think Hubert's going to be given a long, long, long leash. But, yeah, if they have a disastrous season and not making the NCAA tournament is a disastrous season, I, I could see a way. I mean, but, again, Carolina is – this is the new times, right? Like, it used to be an honor to go play at Carolina. Like, yeah, okay, got to come with the money. Um, and uh, they they do have – Plenty of talent. It's not like that league is great. Um, you know, you're never going to get a better time in the ACC with Syracuse changing regimes, with Louisville being down. You know, Pitt still hasn't gotten it going just yet. But, yeah, I mean, I could see it. I, I But if there's ever a guy that's going to get an extra amount of time, if he has another bad year, it'd be Hubert. Yeah. But I could see a Guthridge type of deal if it went really, really bad like it did last year. All right, Porzello. You know, Caleb Love's gone. They bring in a bunch of transfers. Uh, I mean, again, other than Baycott and RJ, it's a completely different team. How much are you buying that, that Carolina's going to win enough so everybody just backs off and like, all right, you know what? Maybe Hubert is the guy again. Yeah, I mean, I think they have a top 20 second weekend tournament type team on paper. Uh, I think Hubert realized that, you know, maybe they need to get a little older. Went out and got two, you know, a couple of high major tested guys in Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram, uh, Elliot Cadeau. I mean, I, I think he's one of the best passers I've seen in at least high school basketball in, in a really long time. He's going to take some time to get going, but I just think on paper, and obviously they were on paper number one last season, but I just don't see a complete collapse for another year. And I just, to me, I mean, people can point to like Matt Doherty and say, okay, he was gone after three years, but he had two, I mean, he had the one good year, second round exit, but he had an awful, awful season when they won eight games. And so I just think it's a completely different dynamic, assuming they make the tournament. I mean, if they make the tournament, this all goes away. And the other thing is, I mean, Wes Miller would be a logical replacement, but I mean, I don't think Cincinnati's a tournament team this year. And so that would be going on three years with no tournament for him at Cincinnati. You can make the case Hubert's had a better season than Wes every year in the past three years. 
And so I just think that makes it a tough kind of replacement if that's the next guy, whether it's now or in five years or whatever. And that's another another school where it's, if it's not Wes, you know, who is it? And maybe they open up and go wide and, and have a national search, but they didn't really, they haven't shown a tendency to do that in a really, really, really long time, maybe ever. And, and so that I just, I think in four months, this conversation is going to sound um, pretty far fetched in terms of Hubert on the hot seat. Cause I think this is a top 15, top 15, 20 type of team. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I think the, the, the big guys. question, the, both those guys the probably question. will be around. Well, Cal, Cal's always right? going to have the pressure though. Cal's always going to have pressure to amount. I mean, if they're 22 and 10 and like a six seed in Mar, I mean, there were six seed last year and people were saying it wasn't good enough. So he's going to have heat right. either way. Hubert, I think, you know, like Doug said, he's going to get that extra time. He's going to get a little bit extra uh, patience from the fan base. Yeah. I, I, I ahead, The Doug. big question with Carolina is going to be Elliot Cadu. And, um, you know, because we've seen – now he's older. He reclassed, mm-hmm. obviously, up. But he was older anyway. But this is a, a huge trend in the college game where kids reclass when they're in eighth grade, so they stay back, and then – if they're high, highly recruited, then they reclass. And, you know, obviously we've seen it with the kid who's going to Duke. We can probably talk about on a different show uh, coming in to, to next year. Right. But the but when we've seen reclasses at the point guard position, yep. they haven't worked out well. That's my my only thing. And I know that he's traditional freshman age of a college basketball player. He's 19 years old, so he's not a young he's not 17. Uh, but that's my only thing is I think I, I think it'll help that he's gonna be he's gonna be playing next to twenty two year old R J Davis and twenty no question Cormac Ryan's probably twenty four no, now no question so he's got some older and, older and, guys next to him that could handle the ball yeah right and like look Harris Ingram's not great but he's a good solid player Cormac Ryan I think is pretty damn good like they made some mm-hmm. very smart additions in the portal guys that don't need the ball or don't need to overhand the ball but they do need somebody who creates shots for them and. Cadeau's that guy, and it, it, what he does from January 15th on is going to tell you all you need to know about this team because he has the ability. It's just reclass as freshman point guards haven't traditionally worked out well for the point guard or for the team. Hubert was 20 and 13 last year, 11 and 9. They were seventh in the ACC. They cannot have a repeat performance of that, like you guys said. They got to get in the NCAA tournament, or else I think that's it for Hubert Davis. Uh, Kenny Payne, man, this one is is hard to talk about because bad timing. Know, Kenny for Payne or bad timing for this episode, I guess. Yeah, yeah, horrible timing for this episode. And exhibition games generally don't mean anything. But for Louisville and Kenny Payne, they mean something when you lose to Kentucky Wesleyan, a D2 team that was picked uh, to finish eighth in the Great Lakes or whatever the hell conference. Great Midwest. Uh, in the, I think it's Great Midwest Conference. Great Midwest. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is is Barzello right. old enough to remember the actual Great Midwest Conference back when it was? Absolutely not. No. Uh, Probably not. No. Probably not. No. Dude, no. that was no Louisville. Do you, see, do you see this hair, Doug? How old Mar- do you think I am? Louisville, Louisville Marquette. Uh, Cincinnati. It was basically the Metro became the great Midwest. And then the Big East, when the Big East expanded, it took away their, their top team. Sorry, there's there, there's your history lesson on the great Midwest. Country. Well, I'll give you a history lesson on Kenny Payne as a head coach at Louisville. He went four in 28 last season. Uh, four in 28. He's under contract. It wasn't just that. 2000. Yeah, no, they were getting blown out. They were getting absolutely blown out. Uh, and then he kind of flipped it in the offseason. Right, they didn't have they didn't have guards last year. I mean, they were just they were a, a disaster last year, and he flipped it and has a completely different roster. Now he decided to go young, which I don't personally understand. Uh, bringing in a bunch of freshmen and you know, like that's not the way. He has to win this year, and going young is not the way to win uh, this season. Well. They lose last night, and now the fan base is up in arms because, again, you can't lose to Kentucky Wesleyan when you're coming off a year like like they're coming off of. Uh, to me, Kenny Payne's in major, major trouble. Even though he's one of their own, he is, again, one of the nicest human beings you'll ever met meet. But but I will say this. When he was hired, yeah, I, w- I was like, I don't I don't understand it. Uh, he's He had been an assistant coach at Kentucky – for Calipari, 
which is about as good a job and easy a job as it gets, and Oregon for Nike, which is about as easy a job as it gets. So I just felt like he should have been a mid-major uh, head coach before he took over at his alma mater at Louisville. And now, to me, I, I don't know what he needs to do to, to be able to get a year three, but I, I don't know if I see any of it happening. Whatever it needs to happen, I, I don't think he's going to accomplish it this year. What concerns me about, about Louisville is that the part of the, I guess, reason for some level of optimism going into the season was a pretty soft non-league schedule. I mean, they have a couple of marquee games, but they open the season against UMBC, Chattanooga, and Coppin State all at home, which theoretically should be three winnable games, get some confidence going. I mean, remember last year, they lost, what was it, their first 11 games, first nine games of the season. This should have been a, a way to just kind of flip that and change the narrative a little bit in the first few weeks and losing at home to Kentucky Wesleyan. And the thing, it, it wasn't even a game where, like, Kentucky Wesleyan got hot, made, you know, 15 three-pointers. Kentucky Wesleyan wasn't very – they shot, like, 36% and made seven threes or something like that, turned it over a bunch of times. And and so it's just – it's kind of scary that, um, you know, games that are supposed to be building confidence and it's just – it's – now they're going into the real season, the regular season, with another exhibition loss, second year in a row – that they've lost to a D2 team at home uh, in the exhibition. It's, I mean, the talent level is better than last year, still not all that high. And now you have just, again, a really negative vibe, negative feeling going into the season. They have a stretch in their schedule, okay, where they play uh, Pepperdine, who's actually is pretty good in the West Coast Conference. They play Kentucky at Virginia, Pittsburgh, at Miami, NC State, at North Carolina, at Wake versus Duke, Virginia, at Clemson, Florida State, at Syracuse. Like, that's a holy crap. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the one that, I don't know, you felt like it was a bad sign when Milt Wagner's on the staff, you know, and they can't get his grandson to play for him. Yeah. You know, like, that's a... And, and I, I understand Kentucky is Kentucky, but like, wow, that's, that's, that's a hard one to take. And then, like you said, you're trying to play with younger players. Like that's not a recipe for you. You do that. And I'm sure at, after every loss, you'll come in and hey, we're really young. Like that's great. Kenny, they don't care at Louisville. They don't really care about how nice a guy you are. You know, they just don't They <laughs> want anymore. to win basketball right. games. and they definitely want to win more when the guy down the street is a little bit struggling, like they want to get back kind of on top. So that's the stretch there. And, but I agree with you, Jeff, like there's a, there was a, it, they were, they didn't look well coached, you know? And I yeah. like Danny Manning. I think he's a good dude. I think he knows, I think he knows ball a lot, but they, they really didn't look well coached. There was a stretch in the middle to end of the season where they did fight back a little bit, won a couple games and look like, Hey, you know what? But I don't know, man, it's Louisville. They don't mess around there. They want to win. They want to win now. They don't care about anything else. And you couldn't get Milt Wagner's grandson to come play for you, and he's playing down the road. That stretch in the middle season will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, I, I just – I don't see a year three coming uh, for Kenny Payne. I, I just don't uh, – I you know, I think, again, the fan base is not going to be happy with 12 wins. You know, even though it goes from four to twelve, which let's say they right. win twelve games, right. and anybody that else might be is a, like, "What a turnaround!" Yes, right, right. Who cares? Like, you got to get in the NCAA. I mean, at least get in the NIT, which I don't even know. If, yeah, I mean, if you saw his quotes NIT. after the game, he said, "He said we're not going to out talent teams. We're not going to have more talent than our opponents." And it's like oh, you're at oh, Louisville. I mean, you should you, you should, should play be Kentucky able to have more Wesleyan. Than of course, you have right. more talent. I mean, you should have more talent than eighty percent of the teams you play. At the very minimum, just based on who didn't you are and that NIL player, and all that stuff. Marzella, didn't he say that a player on his team should have more rebounds when he didn't play the slightly out, the slightly out of context, slightly out of context? He named like three veterans and said they need to have more than one or two rebounds. He 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 Got it. he grouped him into a, into a group okay. of three. But yes, he did he did mention him even though hard he to get a played. rebound when you're not in the court. You know, correct. All right, let, let's move on to the last big name of the quartet. Okay, and, and that is. I think the most intriguing one, in, in, in a way, Juwan Howard at Michigan, right? A couple of years ago, I remember writing a story saying, like, he's the outlier. is the former NBA player who's got $100 million in his bank account who's actually rolling. You know, they were going to Elite Eight. I was still kind of a little bit leery of 
kind of where it was going because he inherited a, a really good culture and some good players from John Beeline. And this thing has started to turn downward. You know, he had two first round picks last year and Hunter Dickinson. They didn't make the tournament. A couple of years ago, they barely got in. They went to a Sweet 16, which kind of saved him a little bit. This year's roster looks completely underwhelming, and it could be a, a repeat of last year, not getting in the NCAA tournament, albeit with far less talent than a year ago. Juwan Howard, how much trouble is is he in, Gottlieb? I think a good amount. Now, I don't know how the football controversy affects him, right? On one hand, football might win the national championship. On the other hand, the, the sign-stealing <laughs> thing is a mess. I will tell you the thing that will affect him the most is that Michigan State is really good, is really good, right? And um, – the rise of Michigan State, you go back to the mid-90s, right? What did it coincide with? The downfall of Michigan. You know, uh, Mateen Cleaves on a fish visit, car accident. They all end up going to, you know, he ends up going to Michigan State. And, you know, it's very hard to those two to be on a level playing field. And everybody looks down the street and is like, well, you got old-ass Tom Izzo, and he's figured it out. He's got a great recruiting class and getting guys to stay. And we're at Michigan and we can't make the NCAA tournament with first round draft picks and, you know, the accusations of daddy ball. So I, I think it's going to be hard. And then he does himself no favors at times with the sideline decorum. He just doesn't. Um, so I, I think all of those things, it, but really hard to fire him. That's a guy that's really, really hard to fire. He's got a lot of friends in the media. He's got a lot of friends that are former players. And, like, let's be honest, he's a really respected dude as a player and and as a human being. Um, so that one's going to be a hard one. I would say that one would be one where if it got bad, he can he get an NBA job? You know, right. can can he can he find a way to do that more so than just the old school acts? And the, the timing of college to pro is better than the timing of pro to college, right? Like Billy Donovan. That, that would be a harder deal to go down because your season's not over until after all the college his might be. are closed up. His, his might be over before. Billy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, but but again, um, like, I, look, I think because the other part is that league's good, right? Yeah. I mean, it's really good. What, is it national championship? I don't know. But Purdue's going to be damn good. Indiana's going to be damn good. Michigan State's going to be damn good. I think I was going to be really good, right? You got you kind of go through the, and yeah, um, yeah. I I think it's going to be a tough tough putt. Point guard play really undid him last year. Plus, they didn't play particularly good defense. Um, but I I think you know a bad year. It all depends upon football, right? Like in football, they give Harbaugh a new deal. If he gets that new deal done, um, I think that that helps him. Uh, but if football is kind of murky, maybe it doesn't help. I don't, I don't, I don't know enough about the inner workings of that athletic department, but I do know the two, a lot of those things are united. You don't fire a football and a basketball coach same year. I don't think they fire no. football for this thing, but I, but I also think that it doesn't look good and they are about optics, especially in the big 10. The buyout's low, Borzell. That's the other thing I want to say here is the buyout is, is very yeah. reasonable, so, but. So here, here, here's, here's my thing with, with Juwan. He's one of their own. Right. Well, I, I think I think a a non Michigan guy would not even really be on the hot seat going into this year. I mean, he made an elite eight in the Sweet Sixteen th two years ago and three years ago. Yes, he had one bad year, but I I just don't think that what he's what one year did, and I, mean, I don't think they're gonna be that good this year, even though they supposedly beat Marquette in the scrimmage. I just don't know if two bad years outweighs the elite eight and Sweet Sixteen. Then you add in the fact that it's Jawan Howard, and I just don't really see him being in all that much trouble this year regardless. Now, what Doug mentioned, jumping to the NBA, I think that's more realistic than him getting fired this year. I, I just think it's – it's, and we, we've run into this with a lot of the, you know, former stars at a college coming back to coach with Ewing and Chris Mullen, guys like that. It's really hard to fire them. And I just think that Jawan has not done nearly bad enough to to get fired after this year even if they go you know 18 and 16 again or 16 and 18 and miss the tournament i don't see him getting fired all right so those are four guys that we think all have a chance to come back for for different reasons uh we're going to tell you when we come back 
the one league that's going to have more turnover than any other league in America, and it resides out west near, near where Douglas lives. Big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price. The format is going to be a little bit different this season. Instead of an 850-page PDF, you'll be getting access to the full site with league-by-league PDFs available for download. The preview will be live on September 20th, so you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in. So for insight for all 362 Division I teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them, make sure you hit that link. Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the field of 68. All right, welcome back. Field of 68 After Dark. I'm Jeff Goodman, joined by Doug Gottlieb, Jeff Borzello, and we're talking hot seat. And we're talking about the league that is going to be no more, uh, that is going to be ravaged also, I think, by some, some turnover uh, after this year. So it's kind of kind of strange to talk about the Pac-12 after this year when it's going to be no more, but we'll talk about the current league the way it's constituted and some of these coaches that uh, are going to be in trouble and uh, listen we're not going to go deep into the weeds on some of these guys but we know Wayne Tinkle he's gone he's gone I mean he was guaranteed a ton of money after the elite eight uh in the in the pandemic I don't know if he's gone he he still has between eight and nine million after this season yeah after this coming season I I don't I don't I I don't know if I see that I think he's gone uh, Jeff, I think they're, the they're going to lose Jeff, enough the money, 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 man. Jeff, where's the they're money? They're going to lose enough. I mean, who's going to be in the matter. stands? Yeah, yeah, you're, 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 uh, let me let me help you out here. Oregon State does not have a conference. Okay? They don't have a conference. They don't have a conference. I just don't know so how you keep get, them another gonna, year. I, uh, uh, that, good. That's fine. Okay? Scott Barnes just got an extension. He's the AD. He hired him. He gave him the extension. Okay? So... This is one of those, you know, you don't like the – you cooked it, you take it out. Right? Your wife tells you to take out the trash. If, I, but, if I'm Wayne Tinkle and I'm, and I'm owed eight, I say, you know what? I don't really want to work anymore. Like, give me six and I'll, I'll go away and I'll retire. I'll retire. No, Wayne, Wayne wants all eight. Wayne's like – you. Want I eight? know, and, but and, like, and, and you all, you also eight. make it seem like they're, they're going to have, like, a sold-out crowd if they got rid of Wayne Tinkle. I mean, it's they've been to two tournaments in the last 35 years, both under Wayne Tinkle. They, it's, they, it's, they and missed think, on look. They they missed on Damon Stoudemire. They they should have hired Damon yeah. Stoudemire. They did not. the the COVID the, the COVID year run saved him, and they gave him an extension. They should have hired Damon Stoudemire. That would have given him a chance at, at a full arena. They did not, and that ship has sailed. Um, but I I I'm, right. I'm with Jeff. All right. or I think Jeff's with me on this one. Okay. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. They're not going to. They're going to finish bottom three in the league, and. Anybody else looks at what they've actually yeah. done, what they've bottom done, one. and but I just I don't see it. They he owes he's owed too much money. Like you're you're thinking like they're logic anybody else. Yeah, logically. No, you're not thinking logically. You're you you're don't without understand. finances involved. I'm thinking Scott Barnes should be well. Actually, their football team's okay, other than Ooh. the fact that they football the team's game good. Arizona. I yeah. know. Football I know. Team's well, good. The, other than the they, bonehead, he didn't do well with goal. the basketball hire at Pitt. He didn't do well at the basketball, you know. Like, you don't think? I, I don't think. Like he's maybe Scott, right? Scott, how about next time you call somebody who knows what the hell they're doing with hoops before you make any basketball decisions again? You are no longer allowed to make any basketball decisions. All this right, is, the, cra- this is the crazy part. Did you know? Did you know Scott Barnes played basketball in college? Also, Jesus. Tim uh, Tim Dury, uh is it Tim Durie? That's who he hired at, yeah. at Utah State. Utah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then he, and he was out. And then he fired him. He was out. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, let's move on. Mike Hopkins at UW. Um, you know, kind of a, a completely different – they got NIL, man. People don't know, UW's got NIL. That's how they were able to, to kind of revamp their roster this year. Unfortunately, I think he did it with – some non-shooting guards, which probably isn't the way to do it. They're old. Yeah, like, um, you brought in two non-shooting point guards. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yes. It really does not. It does not. Um, he's, he's under contract, I think, through 24-25. They've been very average lately the last couple of years. Everybody loves Hop. Everybody loves him. Does he eight. survive another year with this group, Porzella? Uh, I lean no. Um, I do think they have a talented roster. I don't know if it's enough to make the tournament or really make any waves in the tournament. And now the buyout or the, the guarantee, I think, is down to about $3 million after this year. The the one thing is that it's a new AD. And and, and it could be, a, I want to get my own guy in. Or it could be a, yeah. Right. Or it could be a, let's, you know, give me a year under my belt, under my belt before I have to make a, uh, you know, humongous decision but i i lean no right now gone yeah, I, or, or does yeah. he get another year doug i think it's more likely than not that he's gone um yeah troy dannon's the new ad for people who don't know he came yep. from tulane tulane uh it, it took him two hires right his first hire was mike dunleavy jr that didn't go well but then he, <laughs> he fixed it he did, no he did a good one of the worst hire. ever oh, okay previous to that it was it was bad it was bad yeah. I don't know if you guys know, like I interviewed with him for that job and I was like, you're hiring. I remember. Yeah. yeah that was, okay. Um, I don't actually think that was his hire. I think this one was anyway, but before that he was at Northern Iowa with Ben Jacobson. That, that went pretty well. Right. I know they, yeah. they've been up and down, but generally Ben Jacobson, he's the longest tenured guy in the, in the Missouri Valley, incredibly well respected. I just, with no tie to him, they're going to the big 10, like, you got to yeah. get a dude in there. Yeah. And especially you yep. got to get going because they're going to get an NBA team. And you got to make that – Seattle's going to get an NBA team. You got to get that thing going before the NBA comes to town to get heck Ed or whatever they call it now, to heck Ed yeah. back full. I, I, I think this is more likely than not going to be – You know, look, I look agree. Uh, uh, they, were, they were a little bit better last year, and I think they there's a world in which they could be pretty good because Cal – I don't know, you know, if Jalen gets – if, if they get everybody eligible um, and Stanford's kind of uh, what they call it, kids say mid, right? There's some wins to be had out there, but Colorado's good. SC's good. UCLA's good. Arizona's good. Arizona state's the same as they always are. I think it's more likely than not that they finish bottom half of the league and he, he, he's fired. Yeah. I don't, I don't think the uh, Paul Mulcahy severe Wheeler backcourt is ideal in, in this day and age. Uh, you mentioned Stanford, uh, Jared Haas enters year eight at Stanford without an NCAA tournament. He's had plenty of talent come through there. Um, Bernard Muir just, you know, doesn't make moves, right? Like Stanford, do they care anymore uh, enough? And, which is sad because, you know, you and I, Doug, like years ago, like Stanford was really good. You, you, you love going to games there. Now it's like there's nothing. There's nothing in Palo Alto. Nobody hard cares to compete there anymore. though. In fair, in fair enough, hard to compete. Yep. Don't yep. draw anybody. Nobody wants to give an NIL. Uh, now they're going to be playing the ACC. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I and I know some of the alums aren't haven't been the former player alums haven't been happy. Um, and you know he loses he loses his point guard at a grad transfer to NC State. He loses uh, Harrison. Um, uh, I was saying going to go North Carolina, yeah. lose Harrison Ingram in North Carolina. Um, so it's not great. I, you know, I think that that's a team that probably finishes right in the middle of the pack. They're not terrible, but yeah, I think at some point you got to go and the new league kind of makes it sort of easier. Um, and, but I just, those jobs are really hard, man. Vandy, Northwestern, yeah. Stanford, Smart school jobs are really hard because alums don't feel they're not giving money for basketball. Like, yep. No, thanks. And kids don't care as much on campus and it's hard to win because everybody else cares. The, the, right. the, the couple the, interesting let, things let, about is I, I, just, I just think it's it's the logical replacement for the last couple of years. Everyone thought it was going to be Mark Madsen. And now he takes 
a job at their rival school. Yeah. I don't know if it'd be no, their they, rival they or whatever, up. but Amazing. that, yeah, I mean, that, I think, I think, I mean, he probably looked at it and said, well, they've had two years where a lot of people thought they might fire Haas. They put out a statement after the 22, 2022 season saying he needs to show signs of improvement. Then they have their worst PAC 12 season in six, five or six years. Still don't fire him. And so it, it seems like, uh, Mark Madsen got kind of tired of waiting, but now Stanford kind of dropped the ball on that. Russ Turner's yeah, the big probably question the most likely. The big question would be with Madsen and what what's the buyout if if he left in a year or two and and, yeah. and went to to Stanford. Well, I, I don't I mean. I, listen, I think I think hard to turn down your alma mater. It's hard, you know that. Hard to turn him down. Coaching it at is. the arch, you're coaching at the arch rival. Yeah, still your and, alma mater. And by the way, all right. Here's here's. The, Here's the reality to it, okay? So he flipped the roster at Cal. I don't know how good they'll be. Again, depends upon who gets eligible. Yeah. But you can't do that at Stanford. I think there's a reality to it. So True. I think Russ, True. I think Russ Turner becomes the guy. That, that's my feeling. Okay. All right. The the most intriguing in the Pac-12, and, and then we're gonna go quick. We're gonna go quick after this because we, we only have a certain amount of time. We want to get to uh, the final segment, which is is guys that we need to keep an eye on that are going to move up. Uh, Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley does not have NIL, really. Has done a really good job. When you look at it, and again, I went to school at Arizona, so I, I know this situation has, pretty well. He has yes. NIL. Who, who told you he not, NIL? Not great. No, they don't have great NIL. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong on this. They don't. Um, what I, What I'll say is, again, He's actually done, if you look at it in its totality, you know, he went twice to the tournament, took him a little while to get it going, went twice. They were going to go a third year. Then he took, you know, two kids that he probably shouldn't have taken and Josh Christopher and, and Marcus Bagley. And they they kind of screwed the whole thing up a little bit there and haven't been able to quite get it back. You know, he's got a good point guard coming back this year in Frankie Collins, but not a whole lot else. Jemiah Neal. Had a great exhibition game already, but but they don't have a ton. So let's say, for argument's sake, and I think this is probably valid for Zello, that they don't make the NCAA tournament this year. They finish seventh in the in the Pac-12. He doesn't get along great with his AD. Is this it for Bobby Hurley? I mean, he needs to find something else if he can get out, doesn't he? Yeah, I think I think it's this is another one. I think it'd be more likely he'd leave for something else before getting fired. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think we really know how they're going to be this year. I mean, I, I think on paper they don't look good, but they're bringing in like 10 newcomers. Uh, it's a completely new team. Um, but, I mean, like you said, he hasn't done a bad job. I mean, he's been to what, three tournaments, probably should have been to a fourth uh, in the COVID year. And, uh, you know, I, I just – he's he's been on the hot seat, it seems like, for three or four years now. Got the extension, so he still has two years after this. Um and I don't know. I, I just, I, it seems more likely that he would um, look for something, which is, you know, something that he's been, um, you know, rumored to be doing for a couple of, couple of springs now. And I think he'd probably keep doing it next spring and try to find something else. But um, I don't know if he'll do, you know, poorly enough where they would get rid of him after this season. Doug? Yeah. I mean, I, I think the Ray Anderson relationship is a weird one, right? And, you know, Ray would probably, I mean, I think, you know, let's. It would be interesting to see what happens if they if he made a move, if Bryce Drew doesn't have to move and then and gets the job, mm-hmm. right? Um, but uh, and I I they had a secret scrimmage and I've heard it's kind of the same old same old like athletic. Everybody goes and gets theirs. A lot of one on one ball, whatever. But I I do think that Bobby has a tendency to times to do his best work when we think he's team's gonna stink. Like he just. Yeah. He has that ability. Um, I would have thought St. John's would have been a likely, I think a lot of people thought St. John's would have yeah. made sense, but I'm, I'm with Jeff. I think something on the East coast would bring him back. I think that would make it smoother. Cause you're, you're, I mean, you're right, Jeff, like Arizona state does not have great basketball tradition, right? They, they just don't. And so if you look at the totality of his career, he's done a good enough job. Right. And they haven't, yep. the arena sucks. Like that thing looks yeah. exactly like it looked like when Byron Scott played there. Um, everything in the, here's a great crazy thing about Tempe. Every building is brand new, except their basketball arena. <laughs> I mean, it's a dump. Um, so I, I they've done. All right, let, let, let's 
Let's do a little lap rapid fire. We got to get okay, through some sorry, of these other ones. All right, rapid fire. Uh, ACC. Let's start there. Brad Brunell. Uh, does he get one more year after this year? I say last year they basically told him if you don't get to the tournament, you're gone. Well, he didn't get to the tournament. He got one more year because he's such a good guy. He can coach. They drew well. I think he gets one more. I think he's got a good enough team. He gets one more quickly. Borzello, go ahead. I think he gets another year. I think they make the tournament. I think he's got two anchors uh, to build his team around, and and they bring in Joe Girard. I think he's got three high-level players. They make the tournament. He gets another year. I I, can, I agree with that. Agree. Okay. Leonard Hamilton, Doug. Uh, does he retire? Do they bounce back? Is this it for Leonard, who, again, is the youngest 70-something-year-old on the planet? I think he remains until he decides he doesn't want to do it. Jeff? I have the same exact thought as Guy Levi. He does not seem to want to retire, and I don't think they fire him. Um, I don't think they have a good enough team to make the tournament, but I, I don't think I don't see him retiring, and I, you're probably going to ask about Larry Nega. And, and, and I don't and see honestly, him retiring like, either. Football is good. I'm not, I'm not even asking you about Larry Nega because there's no way uh, Larry Nega retired. Zero chance. Zero. Why would he? he he's killing it. He, he's doing the best work of his damn career. Um and and he goes to the beach whenever the hell he wants. Like it's the greatest job ever. No, he's 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 fine. Uh, all right, Josh Eilert at West Virginia. This is an interesting one. What? Now they're down four starters already now to start the season from what they thought they were going to have. Right? They thought they were going to have Jose Perez. He left or got kicked off. He's now at Arizona. He wasn't going to be a starter, but uh, okay. Raekwon Battle, Raekwon Battle is still not cleared. Okay. He, he would be the governor if he wrote a letter cleared. for Raekwon Battle. How about that one? That's yes. Western, that, that's college sports, right? Yeah, a cook, a cook. Hopefully, he's okay, but he's not going to get cleared anytime soon to be able to play back on the court after that scare he had in, in the exhibition game. Kirk Kreese had just got hit with a nine game suspension right before we started recording this. Um, from his, his deal at Arizona. Uh, involving some tickets, uh, according to my sources. If the world so, was a fair place, Jeff, Jeff, if the world yeah. was a fair place, Josh Eilert would get three or four years. He's an awesome dude, okay? Yeah. And he absolutely deserves a shot. The world is not a fair place, right? They have massive yeah. NIL, which means they want to win. And, um, I, I, it, and, you know, like with Huggy, you'll get calls. Maybe not at Kansas, he never got a call. but And then Huggy hanging around, I don't think helps either. That thing is bad. Probably went true. To the exhibition yeah. game for what? Yeah. You're suing the school like so bad, such a bad look. Yeah, I I don't think so. He's got to get him in the NCAA tournament. Are we in agreement? Yeah. If he gets in the tournament, he gets something. He, he he gets another year now. Sure. No. Right. He gets something. Yeah. It may not be a lot of guaranteed money, but if he gets this team now, currently constituted to the NCAA tournament, the dude deserves another year at least. To me, I mean, they've made it pretty – I mean, they had a national search uh, before pick, uh, hiring him in the summer. Like, they clearly want to go and hire somebody else. And yeah. so I, I just think that he's going into the season with a um, in a pretty bad situation. I don't think the roster is very good, um, assuming all these guys don't really come back. I mean, even with all of them, it's just an okay roster. It's probably a tournament roster. And now with the guys injured and, that, and, and ineligible, I just don't really see them making the tournament. And so I just think it's it's a really tough deal for him uh, in this season. I, and I, I see them conducting another search in the spring. All right. We're going to do literally rapid fire uh, yes or no's now. We're going to do yes or no's on these final four guys. Okay. Uh, are they – do they get another year or are they done after this year basically? All right. Johnny Dawkins at, at UCF, Doug. No. Borzella. Which is no, they get he, no more years. He's done after this year. Correct. Correct. All right. So no. Yeah, I, I'm, I, that, we'll make it a trifecta there. Uh, Fred Hoiberg at Nebraska, who who came on strong and saved his job last year at the end of the year. Yes, Doug. Yes, Borzella. Yes. I will say no to that one. I'll say no. Uh, ben Johnson, Minnesota, entering year three. It's been a rough, rough sledding for for Ben. Yes. Uh, yes. No. 
I'm going to go yes. I'm going I'm to say he gets one more. Uh, Jer- Jerry Stackhouse at Vandy. Did well at the end of last year, but, you know, Vandy's still got some tradition. And, uh, you know, Stack is a kind of a new team again. A bunch of guys transferred out. Doug. Uh, I think Stack leaves for a professional job. Borzell. I don't think I don't think he gets fired. Uh, I think he's there if he wants to be there. Yeah, I don't think he gets another NBA job. I think one more year at Vandy, and then that that's it for Stack. All right, uh, coming back, we are going to tell you the names again. Listen, everybody knows about Dusty May at FAU. He's going to have a great team again. He's going to be in the mix for any of these jobs that open up. We're going to give you a few names that you don't really know about or aren't thinking about that are going to going to be in the mix uh, this carousel. Uh, when we come back after dark, hot seat show. Big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price the format is going to be a little bit different this season instead of an 850 page pdf you'll be getting access to the full site with league by league pdfs available for download the preview will be live on september 20th so you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in so for insight for all 362 division one teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them make sure you hit that link Are you a college basketball junkie? Are you the kind of fan that gets frustrated that this beautiful sport has such a lack of national coverage outside of the month of March? Well, let me tell you about the Field of 68, an all-encompassing digital network of podcasts, live streams, and newsletters that cover the sport at every level on every platform. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid-majors, the only way to keep up with college basketball is through the field of 68. All right, welcome back to Field of 68 After Dark. This is the Hot Seat Show, but we don't want to be completely negative, especially because it's Halloween. We get we got to have some positivity here. Kids are going out, getting candy. Gottlieb's going to dress up. I don't know what Borzello is doing. My guess is he's going out with his kids tonight or, or the, the youngest one. I don't know what you do with the youngest one, but um, she's, you, she's you gonna, better I bring your daughter gonna be. I should know this. Oh, they're both going out. I think yeah. the, the, the one-year-old's a Cabbage Patch Kid and the four-year-old's Barbie. It's going to be cold out there, Borzello. Uh, bundle up. No, bundle, bundle up. up. It's going to be like 45 degrees. Bad. I know. I know it would be nice to be, you know, on the West Coast like Gottlieb and never have to worry about the the weather dropping on Halloween. Uh, uh, I, I just leave out a, that, uh, I just leave degrees. out a big thing. Sixty. You know, I we go out for dinner and we just leave out a big bucket, and and I always wonder, like, I probably should get the video, like, who takes the bucket and just drops everything into their 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 deal. Do you have like a ring it. or something like that? Ring yeah, I just you know, have like a. Yeah, I don't, I don't really pay attention to it. I don't pay attention. It's 2020. Uh, anyway, all right. We, we, we got, we've gone through the guys that are, that are going to be, you know, potentially on the chopping block. Let's go through some of the guys that are, that are going to be able to move their way up uh, from the mid-major ranks to coveted coaches that are, that are going to be on the radar of all these high-major ADs. And I, I think, obviously, we know that one name, and it's crazy because a year ago, Nobody had him on any list. Dusty May of FAU. And he goes from this anonymous manager, uh, former manager at Indiana, um, that was an assistant for Mike White for years and gets a tough job. Doug and I were down there a few years ago at FAU, and we never saw that happening. And he he takes him to the Final Four, and now he's got the entire team back. Dusty May headlines the list for sure. Pat Kelsey, you see there, at Charleston. He's going to be in the mix. They lose some key key pieces, um, but they bring back enough. Who else, Doug? Let, let's start with this. Just I want to I want to get into like some of the other bigger names uh, other than Dusty May and Pat Kelsey that you're looking at that are going to be on the radar for the the, the ads that are going to make changes. 
Who do you like? Uh, who do you really like? I think, who, who do you like? Go ahead. Not who me personally. Yeah, not who necessarily is going to get him. But like, if you're an AD, if you're an AD, who are you looking at hiring? Um, well, like I think like Leon Rice is the guy that's probably perfect for Washington, right? That that makes yeah. too much sense to me. Uh, Darren DeVries is going to be really interesting, right? Because he has a son who's a junior at Drake. He's done an amazing job at Drake, stayed a little bit longer. Like, there's a guy who is a really well-respected head coach and jobs in the Midwest. That would make, that make sense, too. Um, I'm going to be interested. You talk about great turnarounds. Jason Hooten did a really good job at Sam Houston. He's at New Mexico State. That's been a, that's been, you know, like a trampoline job. You go there, boom, you're in the, in the mix. And because it was such an abject disaster, you're going to have maybe inarguably the greatest turnaround season. Wouldn't surprise me if Hooten finds a way kind of back around the state of Texas, whether it's a year or two years. And I'm still a, I'm still a big Russ Turner guy at UC Irvine. Um, um, I don't know. Those, those are a couple of the names that come off kind of the, the, the top of my head. Orzello, who, uh, who have we not mentioned so far uh, that you really like? Again, that ADs should be looking at hard uh, that, that you think are going to be guys that if they're hired in the right spots or maybe anywhere right now, as long as they get NIL, that they're going to be successful. Is this is this where I should mention who I think is, is could be this year's Dusty May? Or is this or no, is let's, saving that? Yeah, you can do that. That's no, fine. Got, That's fine. All right. So the big well, question. I was going to say, I was, I was gonna say that the two, the two, the two names that I was going to say before that. I, I mean, I, I don't know if we've really talked about them enough, but Matt Langle and Bob Ritchie. I just think Langle's had an incredible amount of success, and Ritchie kind of he had a lot of regular season success. Kind of checked off the one box he didn't have. Went to the tournament and beat Virginia. So I think those two guys will be on. I mean, different regions of the country, but they'll be on a lot of different lists in the spring. But if you're looking for a guy, if you're digging a little deeper. I, I just think that, you know, we all talk about Pat Kelsey because Charleston had a great year last year. The number one seed in the CAA tournament last season was Hofstra. And I think Speedy Claxton, he's got a name, played in the NBA for a bunch of years, was a college star, first round pick. To me, I, I just see him as a guy, if they can win the CAA again, or even finish second and be competitive. To me, he's a guy that a lot of ADs should be really intrigued by. I, I just think that you know, he seems to connect with kids. He can recruit. He can coach. Um, uh, to me, I, I just think I see him at the highest of levels in college basketball. I, I agree. I'll give you one more name. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Bart Lundy at UW-Milwaukee. Yeah. Um, yep. He was at Queens College, flipped UW-Milwaukee in one year. Um, I think that that dog will hunt anywhere. Um, I'm interested maybe in both your guys' take on Joe Pasternak. He has the best team yep. in, the, in, yep. in the Big West. Uh, he's won the Big West. He's got, he's you know got pros. He's become a good landing spot. Obviously, he's at Arizona. I think. I, I think the they're firm. He, he always has like NBA players on his roster. Well, and you know, you yeah. go back to when he was at Cal at Arizona. Yeah. Like he's done a great job in terms of networking. It, it was weird. I I would have thought he would have gotten a shot at Cal maybe before. Like the Madsen thing made more sense with Stanford and Joe for Cal, but. Um, those are two guys, Bart Lundy and Joe Pasternak are, are two definite dudes. All right. I'm going to give you one that you'll be like, yeah, yeah, no doubt. And then I'll give you one that you're going to be like, Ooh, okay. Didn't think of him. Okay. Uh, the one that's the no doubt is Eric Anderson at South Dakota state, right? Went to the tournament a couple of years ago, Baylor Shireman transfers out. He's got Zeke Mayo back. Uh, one of probably the best player in the, in the summit. Luke Apple comes back from an injury. Eric Anderson, a no brainer to me. The one that, I think you guys are going to be a little surprised about, but watch Justin Gray at Western Carolina. Okay. Chris Paul's back court mate at wake. He's in his third year. He took over a program that was struggling first year. They weren't very good. They won, I think 17 games last year. They have a chance because I think the SoCon's open this year a little bit. They got a chance and he's got a stud. This kid, Montarius Wolbright plus Trey Jackson, Plus Russell Jones, they got three All League caliber players. Guy goes to Summit and SoCon Media Days, and suddenly he's just he's just throwing out propaganda for them. I love it. Hey, listen. Bottom line, Justin Gray, he's got the pedigree too. Yeah, I I, I like Brian Baroni, what he's done at SI, SIUE at Edwardsville. Yep. It's a yep. hard, hard job, and he's made it into a pretty good job. 
let's be honest, though. Dusty May, Pat Kelsey, those are the two guys certainly that are atop everybody's list right now. Uh, the question is, what jobs would get them to leave their current situations? Because life isn't so bad in, in Boca Raton and Charleston. Trust me, I know uh, with the latter. All right, thanks for joining us. Hot CTO, thanks to uh, Dagan Hughes, our producer. Thanks to Borzello, Gottlieb, and uh, hopefully nobody will get fired. We don't want anybody to get fired. So uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you.